Um, book or two of everyone on um, this Sunday, first day of the week. It is Sunday, April 26th. It is the 17th day of the County of the Omer, making way to Shavuot. I want to focus this week where we have one of the richest Torah portions of the Torah. Uh, I'm partial to it because it was my, my bar mitzvah portion. Uh, it's actually a double portion, Acharemot Kedoshim, but I want to focus here on Kedoshim. We'll talk about Acharemot later, but Kedoshim. Kedoshim, holiness. It includes the holiness code in chapter 19. And it's like the center of the Torah is, is Leviticus and the center of the center is Kedoshim. And the center, perhaps, of that Parsha is Vahafta Lareacha Kamocha Ani Adonai. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am God. I am Adonai. And I want to focus on this powerful phrase. It sounds so simple. Everyone's heard of it, you know. Of course, let's get in there. Love your neighbor, not like, not appreciate, not, you know, love. Love but not have to like. It's the interesting difference. Your neighbor, not neighbors, not love the world, not love your friend, not love your family member, specifically neighbor, and of course as yourself, and then even I am Adonai. I want to talk about this word, neighbor versus neighbors. So, you know, love, first of all, the whole idea of commanding love is complicated. I mean, it's such a rich verse, such a rich pasuk. Okay. I want to focus here. Love your neighbors would be to just love the world, to, to be, in a sense, ready and prepared to express one's emotion, and Maimonides is very specific in the commentary. Love is not just an emotion. That is, of course, the love. But it's through your action. You, see, you should be able to see that love. I, I can't stand people say, oh, this person really loves you. If the person is abusing you, they may have some emotions that feel at feelings of love. But in the end, actions are what matter in terms of we assess what love is. No one's perfect. People make mistakes, of course. And even the course of loving someone, you can hurt their feelings. But in the end of the day, to love your neighbor means to do actions that are beautiful, kind, that you can see the love. You can, it's not just feel, you can see the love through someone's actions. Now, so easy to say, I love the world or I love everyone, or I send love to everyone. And maybe even to perform mitzvot, perform positive actions towards a large group. Not, actually, I'm gonna say easy, it's a strong way. But there's one way to go about it. I'm gonna love something by, by speaking about it, by being kind in general. Even showing love to random people that I don't know very well, you know, this idea of random acts of kindness, which is a beautiful thing. It happened to me once, I was at the gas station line, I told this in a, in a drash, this young pest year, high holidays, where someone, unbeknownst to me, bought from me my candy bar while I was in line as a gift. Like, I didn't, you know, it happens sometimes, you're in line, you're waiting. Person bought it from me, didn't know, go up to the counter to pay, and the person said, the person behind me paid for it. That was an aspect of love your neighbor. This person was doing this, a random act of kindness. But, and it was beautiful, and I appreciated it. But it says love your neighbor, very specific in the singular, because it's about showing love to the person who's not far to you, or random to you. It's the person you know. It's the person you see. It's the person in your social life, work life. Maybe that bothers you, that you find annoying. It's loving a specific person. That is the challenge of love your neighbor. It's not general, it's specific. And some people ask me, you know, as a rabbi, you know, what are you impressed by in terms of other leadership? Look, clearly I'm impressed and I admire all types of leadership. I study leadership very seriously. It's something that means a lot to me, Rabbi Jenny. Leading large groups is impressive. Being able to, to be charismatic, to be influential, it's important. But you know what I'm most impressed by now? You know, 
the stage of my life. It's the person who can love one individual person who can be challenging or difficult or socially awkward, who can go to that one particular person and love that person through their actions. Large groups, sure, it looks great and it has big influence, but can they go one-on-one -on -one and really demonstrate that love in that conversation with one person? Remember, it doesn't mean like. I don't have to actually enjoy or want to be a friend with this person. I don't have to actually say I want to spend a lot of time with that person. I could say, you know, this person's various views on the world, politics, religion. But if we're going to make it as a society, that's why it's so core, this verse. We have to find a way to love specific people in our sphere that are close to us. The person that is our literal next door neighbor that maybe once in a while we annoys us with how they act. That we can love them. That's the key to a society that's not based on individualism and but really feels connected to one another. Love your neighbor, not your neighbors. Not because you shouldn't love your neighbors. You, hopefully you should. Because the real test is how do you deal with your person close to you. That shows what your character is. So this week, particularly in this challenging time, love your neighbor. Love the individual person. See if you can express kindness at distance and love through your actions to someone who's near to you. Then I'll see, I'll know that you actually love your neighbor, not just theoretically the world, but someone specific. That's the test. Bokertov, a good, safe, healthy day. A day filled with love. Please, God. Shalom.